Right, so if I can take you back to the start of the summer, uh, Henrik, at what point did you find out that you're in the Denmark squad to fly out to Russia? Um, well, we we had a few days where we were like a, like a big squad and then I think we had two weeks of training with the team and then after that he, he cut it down and made the official squad. So yeah, a few few weeks after we, we ended the season here. And who was the first person that you told once you got that news? Oh, it was definitely my wife. Uh, she's been supporting me all the way. So uh, yeah, and, and I know it was going to be tough on her as well that she's was going to have the kids. So uh, no, she was definitely the first, the first to tell. What were your kind of experiences of, of Russia as a country? Because obviously, just despite the, the pre-tournament kind of scaremongering by the English media, I mean, most fans that have come back have said, "What well, a good time they had! What welcoming host the Russians were!" Well, it was uh, definitely a good experience. Uh, everything that we saw was under control, and there was nothing to say about it. I think Putin made made sure that everything was running smoothly so uh, I have nothing to say everyone was everything was running smoothly and uh, yeah very good experience there seemed to be a real togetherness around the Denmark camp what was it like to be part of that group oh it was it was great uh, of course there's going to be different characters in, in a group like that but uh, I would say that we we get along very well uh, even though we were together for for quite a while um, very good guys and uh, yeah I think we showed it on the pitch as well. Like we're a good group of guys. And who are the lively characters in that Denmark setup? Well, there's always going to be like the the joking types and the types who stick like on all the time. And there's going to be people like me who's a bit more down to earth. But uh, it's good. We need we need all kinds of people in a, in a group to to make it to make it work. So uh, I think it I think it went well. And onto the games. What's going through your mind as you're as you're walking up to the pitch through the tunnel ahead of that first game against Peru? Is that the moment where the kind of enormity of the situation hits you at that point? To be fair, it was uh, in Danish you say you have like butterflies in your stomach. Uh, I did feel a bit more nervous than, than than normal, but as soon as the the whistle blew, it sounds weird, but but then it just felt like any other game. Of course, there's more at stake and. You might not take the same kind of risks that you normally do, but uh, other than that, I was just trying to play my game. And how do you assess the tournament from a playing point of view, both for yourself individually and for the squad? Um, well, for myself, uh, I think I, I did well. Um, I didn't like fall through, and uh, I, I wanted to make some more like attacking runs and so. But again, it's, it's so much at stake, so you don't want to want to risk too much. So it was. It was, I had to take care of the defensive part at the first and then we could see from there. And then from the, from the team's part of view, I, I think we did all right in the, in the group stage. Uh, against Croatia, we have, obviously we wanted more. Uh, I think we were the, def, the better team in the second half and the extra time. I think we, we should, have, should have gone through, but um, that's football. So do you think the challenges that you faced in Russia against the likes of Croatia and France, obviously both finalists in the end, do you think that that will improve you as a player coming back and, and playing in the championship? Well, I definitely hope so. Um, it should give me some confidence. I've, I've, I've played against players who play at the top level all the time, so and I think I managed it well. So I should I should be able to take that experience and make something positive out of it. And Christian Eriksen obviously often dominates the kind of the media talk around the Denmark squad. Is that ever a point of, of frustration for you as players? Because obviously, you know, as a defensive unit, you got through the tournament conceding what, two goals during the entire tournament, you know, in, in the 90 minutes. So is that a source of frustration at times or is that something you just kind of get on with and just ignore? I think it's fine. Uh, Christian Eriksen is, he is our star. There's no point in hiding behind that. So. Uh, I'm the type who doesn't like all the the media and the and the yeah all that public talking. So I just like to like focus on my job and just work hard. So for me, it's I like it when he just takes all the attention. I can keep working on what I'm supposed to do. And what's he like behind closed doors as, as a character? Oh, he's very very calm guy, very down to earth. I would say similar to the way he is on the pitch. Uh, yeah, very good guy. And who was the standout player that you faced during the tournament? Because as we mentioned, you, you faced both France and Croatia, both finalists. So, so who was the standout player from, that you faced? 
Uh, well, if you just look at the paper, uh, I would say that Thomas Lemar would, would be the best player. But to be fair, I think it was actually in, in one of the friendlies against uh, Mexico, uh, Jesus Corona. He was, uh, he was a good player, let me say it like that. I was, uh, he had me a few times. Uh, so, so I actually think, think it went well in the, during the World Cup. There wasn't a player where I felt, oh, he's really, really, really good. But uh, in one of the friendlies, they had a little Mexican guy. He was good. And have you had much of a chance to, to have some time off following the World Cup? Obviously, it's been a busy summer for yourself. I had three weeks with the family after after the World Cup, so that's been nice. Uh, just to spend some some quality time with friends and family, and yeah, just chill out and just get my head away from football. So yeah, really enjoyed that. You're back at Jersey Road now. How are you feeling heading into the new season with Brentford? No, yeah, well, I feel I feel great. Uh, a little rusty the first couple of days, but uh, the numbers of the tests show that I'm almost where I'm supposed to be. So, uh, looking forward to the season. How's training been? Have you been impressed with the new boys that have come in this summer as well? Yeah, from what I've seen, they're they're, they're doing great. Uh, spe especially uh, our French guy Said. I think he he looks exciting. He's got some of the wow factor that, that you've been looking for when the the games are stalling a bit then he, he has that extra thing and obviously you had the birth of your second child in march how are you finding kind of balancing fatherhood and being a professional football uh, well it is tough of course especially because we we had them so close to each other uh but no it's 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 great uh i think Having kids just show there's something bigger than than football, and I think it's good to have some perspective perspective in life. Sometimes uh, they are struggling a bit in the heat, uh, as as we are, but uh, no, it's 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 great. The kids will be Brentford fans, of course. Yes, of course they will.